Hey, honey, I have a question. Mm-hmm. Um, if one were to give a really good speech, like for speech club, how would one uh, go about creating that speech? Well, I think you have to know a little bit about the topic first. If you don't know what you're talking about, it's obvious to everyone who's listening. Hi, Mom! <laughs> <clears throat> <laughs> I am the one who knows what I'm talking about. Uh, if you don't know what you're talking about, uh, that's a big problem. So research. Do your research. But the thing that most people are terrified of is the actual talking in front of other people. I find this completely banal. It's very easy. People are stupid. They aren't paying attention <laughs> anyway. No one cares about what you're talking about. So... Don't go in there thinking this is some life or death scenario. Just be like, all right, here's, here's the information I have to present to you. Here it is. I'm brilliant. You fucking know it. That's why you're here to listen to it. Let's do this. Give me all of your accolades. Shower them upon me. Rain them down upon me like I'm deserving. Because I am. And you can be too. You just need to have an unbelievable amount of confidence. Uh, some call it hubris. I call it... <laughs> I call it acknowledgement of one's greatness beyond any reasonable doubt. I think so long as you have the power of hubris on your side, any public speech of any sort can be yours easily. Okay, okay. So let's talk about structure. How would you go about structuring a speech? Well, first you start off with uh, with an icebreaker, some kind of light, gentle comment like, uh -huh. You know, in every public speech, you're supposed to imagine everyone naked. Uh, I didn't think that I'd have my parents in the front row. <laughs> uh, hey, that's actually funny. You've instantly gotten everyone on your side. Bam. No problem. Second, uh, tell everyone what the hell you're here to tell them about. Don't Just be straightforward. I'm here to discuss this thing. You all know it already. It's on your programs. Come on. And then... Walk them through it like they are tiny little babies who do not understand how things work. Because obviously they're here to be, to be coddled and guided down the path of knowledge that you have or have researched or had someone else give you. Doesn't matter. It, it really doesn't matter. Uh, ultimately, once you've gotten them walked down the path, end it with another polite joke. Um, something like, well... Okay, this isn't the first time I've seen my parents naked, so now I feel... Now at least I've done it in public, so you all have felt that with me. Ha 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 ha. Uh, and then point to two random people in the crowd. Don't have them sitting next to each other. Make it even more awkward. If you can find two people that would never have been together, even better. If you, if you get some kind of strike of imagination and perfection and you hit two people who were once exes <laughs> who are both younger than you that you claim were your parents it's like a thousand you got a thousand points this is graded on a curve every other <laughs> every other speech after you is a failure a complete and total failure because you won okay so let's talk about like stage presence and delivery can you give us some tips you about need, that. You need hubris. Yeah, yeah you touched yeah, on you, that. You, yeah. you need the hubris. Like, that's the most important thing, is hubris. Uh, some call it overconfidence. <laughs> some call it bravado. I don't know about that. I just know that it is most perfectly named hubris, and you need it. It is the most important thing. It is number one. And number two. It is number two, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> It is definitely number two. It is shit. Wow. So is that all you have to say about speech? Yeah, hubris. You need it. Okay. So hubris. Hubris. And naked jokes. Hubris, naked jokes about your parents. Specifically your parents, and then you point to people who could not possibly be your parents. So that's Ryan's tips for speech giving success in three bullet points. Three bullet points. Absolutely. Uh, this is different than Ryan's promo uh, techniques which are used to usually deride your opponent and make them feel weak and inferior. If you're doing a speech, that's not what you're doing. You're, you're conveying information. You're not trying to tell everyone in the front row that you'll beat them at SummerSlam. Well, people skills from uh, Ryan Awesome over here. Ryan, do you have a question for me? I, I do, actually. If there could be a 
a device, an invention uh-huh, uh-huh. that you believe the world needs more than anything else, oh. what would that invention be? Um, a device that plans sustainable food production techniques and then delivers that food to everyone who is hungry and can't afford it. So Amazon River. Yeah. Wow. That was actually extremely smart of you because they say that the forests uh, near the Amazon are not actually wild tangles. They're actually carefully cultivated permaculture forests um, created by the people indigenous to the land who just set up sustainable, no-till, no-tending garden systems so they could eat. And when you've got like the critters of the river mixed with the, the gardens of the forest, that's a really good way to get cheap and sustainable food. So now all we need are drones to also help like shoot the fish out of the river oh my and, God. and like <laughs> and like pick up the indigenous people to put together our iPhones. Like is that Wow, that's so offensive. Yeah. Oh wow. No. Hi, have we met? We have met. But if we could like what if we used like a major river in the US and created permaculture gardens to line it? Or similarly, like some public parks now are creating um, free food in the parks by planting perennial edible uh, plants that not only look lovely, but provide food to people who need it and then encourage people to harvest it. Mm Hmm. Will this hurt local agriculture? You know, that's a really good question and I'm not an economics expert. Um, But my guess is that by doing things like supporting local farmers, um, and like the pick and pool, like uh, berry farms and apple orchards, we can create more cross connections between the community and the farmers. And we can begin talking and having a two way conversation about what works best economically for them and what works best for us in terms of having healthy nutrition. Hmm. Uh, there's a little bit of me that's worried about, uh, you know, uh, California, which is where we are, specifically has a lot of like immigrant labor that comes up from Mexico to pick the fields that, quote, Americans won't do. Mm-hmm. Do you believe that Americans as a whole, if they know that there's a food resource just outside their door, would actually go outside to get it? I think what we need to do is make it enticing, maybe make it trendy, certainly advocate for things like foraging. Like now if you go to Berkeley, California, you can actually take classes in foraging. So just like some people like, I don't know, taking cheese making classes or artisanal ceramics, you can become a forager in the same sort of hipster way. And I think by making it cool and making it accessible and making that information easy to find, we can get a lot of people to form sort of a locus of interest around a topic that then ripples out among the population, much like early adopters of technology, uh, make that technology mainstream eventually. Will the cost of flannel go up with this? (laughs) Mustache wax, will that also? (laughs) Well, um, I, I, I don't see fashion changing, but there might be greater demand for good book uh, boots for walking in the forest. Uh Mm Uh-huh. So where do we keep these forests? Uh, Well, here in California, we have beautiful sycamore forests, actually right in our hometown of Livermore. Um, We're in this kind of coastal valley region that has a great deal of oak. Um, And if we didn't have cattle grazing all over the place, we'd have amazing shrubs like the manzanita shrub forests that are around here Mm -hmm. okay that almost sates me Uh, (laughs) dear do you have anything that you want to ask me i do um top three youtubers and why top three youtubers oh god see the issue with youtubers is that they're all asses (laughs) 
You know, honey, we've been YouTubers. Yeah, and I stand by my statement. Uh huh. Well, at least for me, you might, you might, you got pulled into it. It's, it's not your fault. Honey, it was my idea. It, that's what I told you, and I'm glad <laughs> you believe me. And remember, it's world building, not, not gaslighting. Gas <laughs> um, no, uh, YouTubers is a whole like, who can say what is best? Like, best for me, uh, best for you, best for random person listening to this on the internet. Hello, random person. Hi, mom. Um, <laughs> I really, truly hope my mom isn't Listening, ever find me. Yeah. Um, so, like, if you take YouTubers for me, mm -hmm. uh, that would be Lily Pichu. Ooh, yeah. She's the one with the voice. She has a very distinctive voice that people think she's faking. Mm -hmm. I don't believe she's faking it. Mm -hmm. uh, because when she tries other normal voices, they are terrible. <laughs> Now, is she number one out of this list? Uh, yes. Okay. Yes. Um, she has amazing music pieces that she does. Uh, is she a composer? She does compose. She also arranges. She also does art classes. She is like... Nice. Yeah. She's a renaissance person. Yeah. And uh, YouTube has given her... YouTube and Twitch mm -hmm. have given her the opportunity to do that. So I am very jealous Sure. But I'm also glad that it's, you know, working out for her. Mm -hmm. Number two for me, I must stress for me, would be probably I Will Dominate. Who, what? I don't even know what that is. That's fine. Uh, he is a League of Legends streamer. Mm -hmm. And he is a uh, jungle main, which is a guy whose whole role is to run around... Not in one of the lanes in League of Legends, but to run around outside of them and help every lane individually. I didn't know you could do can. that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Uh, it's not an easy role, but it's uh, it's constantly been told to him that it's the easiest role this season. Mm -hmm. He tells them that they are liars. Uh, you know, whatever. He has a great time. I love his attitude about everything. Uh, he once was a bit toxic. Aw, how so? Uh, he used to just flame and insult his team, enemy team. Just, it was bad. It was real bad. It was really bad. However, that's not what got him banned. He got banned? He got banned because the art department asked him for his input on a character skin. And he went out publicly and said, that art is terrible for this character. And because he derided the company... He got banned. Talk about hubris. Uh, yeah, he is a great public speaker. I agree. <laughs> I believe that he could do it. And he has a series of, of videos on his channel where he's like teaching people how to jungle now. Mm -hmm. um, high level stuff. So like I couldn't have you watch them and make any sense to yeah, you. It, you would be like, yeah. why, is he buying a, why is he buying a knife? That seems dumb. Yeah, I don't he's, know how to lull. He's, he's a wizard. Why does he need a knife? Like... That kind of thing. Um, I just I just really like his style. Number three would be Fedmeister. Oh, and he's the one who lives in the house with... He's the one who lives in the house with Lily Pichu. Okay. Um, he used to be the editor for their streamer house. Okay, okay. Uh, that's what he was originally hired on to do, but then he just started being in everyone else's stuff. Nice. And then started making his own stuff. Mm -hmm. So now he is his own content creator, and they had to hire another editor <laughs> to edit their stuff. Excellent. So, and he does weird stuff. He doesn't necessarily play games, because what he plays he's not good at. That's not, that's not his thing. He's just a very energetic and excitable person who does literally whatever it takes to make a laugh. So, recently on his stream, he he mail-ordered a Princess Peach costume. Whoa, okay, that sounds amazing. Uh, and then he decided to bomb the other fellow streamers of his house during their streams, dressed up with <laughs> full makeup, wig, Princess Peach outfit, and they, and they did a whole thing on it. It's hilarious. That sounds brilliant. Yeah. He's into constant cooking competitions with one of his roommates uh, because he thinks he's a good cook and she doesn't think she's a good cook, but she kicks mm -hmm. his ass all the time. Now, I've got to say a lot of people really agree with you about Lily Pichu because you went out the other day with me running errands mm -hmm. and like how many cashiers complimented you 
on your Lily P2 uh, t-shirt. At least two people. Yeah. And that's two people on a random like Thursday afternoon. Yeah, like a department store and what I was think the it was other a, one? I think we were out eating. And like the eatery where yeah. we went. That was kind of amazing. So your top three YouTubers are Lily Pichu, mm -hmm. I Will Dominate You. No, not I, not you. Just I Will Dominate. I Will Dominate. And then Federmeister? Fedmeister. Fedmeister. So check them out on the YouTubes because I obviously haven't, but they're great. To me. To Ryan. And that that's important to note because everyone's taste about things is going to be different. Not everyone is going to enjoy... Uh, the the musical streams of of Lily. Not everyone is going to like the League of Legends content slash commentary that uh, that Dom does. Mm -hmm. And uh, many people will find what Fed does to be obnoxious and abrasive. Right, right. So you know your mileage will vary. So did you have a, another question for me? I ran out of questions. I only had the one. You only had the one. Well, I think this was actually sufficient. Thank you so much for listening. My name is Wendy, and this is... Ryan. And we will see you in the next episode. Goodbye. I am Ryan.